in the months that it took to move the herd to the ranch west of High River, there was one man who was second in importance only to the foreman. He was the camp cook. The one thing that the cowboys cherished most, together with sleep, was good food. Fred Stimson always liked the best, so he came looking way out west. A ranch is what he wished to have, to graze both cows and little calves. The best new grass was tall and green, the best that Fred had ever seen. The Kisco Creek he made his bed, for twenty years he ruled the spread. Now Bill Winder was a Mountie, stationed in Fort McLeod. He had a brother-in-law who was both boisterous and loud. Fred, Bill said, you gotta see the grass we have out west. Fred Simpson came and he agreed. The wild fescue was the best. So that got Simpson dreaming about a cattle ranch of his own. But the money for a lease was more than Fred had ever known. So Fred paid a visit to the Allen Brothers of Ocean Steamship fame. And he soon left for Chicago with the Bar U brand to his name. Now he knew that the cattle down south would be great at best. So in top purebred bulls, it would be wise to invest. He hired Herb Miller, an Illinois boy, to give them care. Herb, he brought them home by train, Sternwheeler, then Shank's mare. Fred Stimson was there to greet him at the Highwood branch. He now had the bulls, a brand, a name, the land, but still no herd for the ranch. He hired on his neighbor, Tom Lynch, to get the job done, because he knew that for trailing cows, Tom was the one. He and Tom and Lost River, Idaho, bought 3,000 head, 75 horses, and a crew for the long trail to the spread. Foreman Abe got the cattle branded before being on their way, and supplies were bought before their drive started, the middle of May. For four months, the cattle were trailed slowly over the plains, traveling at 10 or 12 miles a day through the heat and the rains. On September 25th, 1882, the herd trailed for the last day. And in the foothills of Alberta, the Bayou Ranch was here to stay. There were many years of expansion and prosperity to follow for the Foothills Ranch. There are many stories left to be told about the Bayou, about George Lane and his horses, about Pat Burns, Raymond Clifford, and Lee Allwood. And all this must be another story for another day. The barns are alone and silent The planks cover the floor The stalls hold many old memories Of a scene that walked through the door Buildings are part of the story Tombstones of a life we'll never see once home to horse and cowboy, holding ghosts of past memories. The corrals are weathered and empty, a time waiting to rust. Cattle no longer on the tally, each day moves closer to dust. This ranch so close to the Rockies The Pekisco splits it in two With a hundred years of memories Alive on the old On the hill is a symbol Of the days when wolves roamed the plains When the west was wild and exciting Was a life we'll never see again Buildings are part of the story Tombstones of a life
life will never see Once home to horse and cowboy Holding ghosts of past memories A history preserved for the future A picture that won't go away Depicting a life in the foothills That excites the cowboy today This ranch so close to the Rockies The Pacisco splits it in two With a hundred years of memories Alive on the old bar you With a hundred years of memories Alive on the old bar you High in the Sierra Peaks where the yellow pines grow tall Sandy Bob and Buster Jeeks had a roundup camp last fall They took their ponies and their running gear and maybe a dog or two And they loud they'd brand all the long-haired calves that came within their view Well many a long-haired doggy didn't hush up by day Had his long ears whittled and his old hide sizzled in a most artistic way then Sandy Bobby said one day as he throwed his cigar down, I'm tired of this cowography and the laws I'm going to town. They saddles up and they hits a lope and how them boys could ride. And them was the days when an old cow hand could oil up his insides. They starts her out at Kentucky Bar at the head of Whiskey Row And they winds her up at the depot house some forty drinks below They sets her up and turns around and goes the other way And to leave the Lord forsaken truth them boys got drunk that day Well as they was heading back to camp and packing a pretty good load Well who should they meet but the devil himself come a prancing down the road Now the devil, he said, you cowboy skunks, you better go hunt your hole. Cause I come up from the hell's rim rock to gather in your soul. Sandy Bob said, devil be damned, I may be a little bit tight. But before you gather any cowboy souls, you're gonna have a hell of a fight. He swung his rope and he swung it straight and he also swung it true. He caught the devil by both his horns and he takes his dallies true. Old Buster Jeeps was a Riata man with his rope all coiled up neat. He shakes her out and he builds them a loop and he roped the devil's hind feet. They threw him down on the desert ground while the irons was getting hot. They cropped and swallowed, forked his ears and they branded him up a lot. They left him there in the Sierra Peaks next to a blackjack oak And before they left they tied some knots in his tail just for a joke So if you're ever up there in the Sierra Peaks and you hear one hell of a wail It's just the devil bellering about the knots tied in his tail In the months that it took to move the herd to the ranch west of High River, there was one man who was second in importance only to the foreman. He was the camp cook. The one thing that the cowboys cherished most, together with sleep, was good food. Come all you young waddies, I'll sing you a song. Stand back from the wagon, stay where you belong. I've heard you observe and I'm fussy and slow While you're punching cattle and I'm punching dough Now I reckon your stomach would grow to your back If it weren't for the cook that keeps filling the slack With beans in the box, pork in the tub I'm wondering now who will fill you with grub 
think you're right handy with a gun and with rope But I've noticed you're bashful when using the soap When you're rolling your bowl for your brown cigarette I've been rolling the dough for the biscuits you ate When you're cutting stock, then I'm cutting steak When you're wrangling them hosses, I'm wrangling a cake When you're hazing the doggies and batting your eyes I'm hazing dried apples that aim to be pies You brag about shooting out windows and lights But try shooting biscuits for twelve appetites When you call from your roll and the ground it is froze Then who boils the coffee that thaws out your nose? No use you snorting and fighting your head If you like it with chili, just eat what I said For I aim to be boss of this end of the show While you're punching cattle and I'm punching dough While you're punching cattle and I'm punching dough There were many cowboys who worked at the bar you, And there were probably some who had shady dealings in the past the most notorious of them all, however, was Harry Alonzo Lombaugh, the Sundance Kid. The census done in 91, way out at the old bar you told of a guy, gray blue of eye, who was one of the crew. He showed no fear, played it by ear, and never did he whine. The herd didn't say a word of his life south of the line. He played it fair, he did not err, and he obeyed the law. He soared to fame despite his real name, Harry Alonzo Longball. Stories told by cowboys bold and songs of what he did tell boastfully how charm must be the life of a Sundance kid. His legs were bold, his manner bold, sharp as a razor blade. He stole from banks and then said thanks for the whole escapade. He robbed the train, showed he had brains and great audacity. He joined the gang and the wires rang of him and Butch Cassidy. Then life and limb were risked by him out on the outlaw trail. Pinkerton men tried to bring him in. But he never stayed in jail the Stories told of cowboys bold Songs of what he did Tell boastfully how charm must be The life of the Sundance Kid Oh, boastfully how charm must be The life of the Sundance Kid Come closer, all you cowboys, and I'll tell you about the skirmish way down south. They called it Custer's Last Stand, and I assure you there ain't nothing but the truth going to come from my mouth. They say that General Custer had a peculiar way when he was about to engage in battle that day. Run and get my red shirt, he would call to his man. The lieutenant never thought to ask why. He just ran. This was repeated every time the Indians were fought. The lieutenant would run for the wagons, and the shirt was got. Finally, the lieutenant asked why I'd like to know. Custer replied, well, if I'm wounded in battle, my blood won't show, and my soldiers will remain loyal and true, not knowing that their leader was almost through. Well, the next week, Custer had met the Indian as the little bighorn, and he knew this was the battle for which he'd been born. Until he saw all the Cheyenne and Sioux, each with bow and lance. Quick, he yelled to the lieutenant, run and get my brown pants!
was the cowboy down at the barn for 10 years. Uh, one day I had a volunteer saddle maker up in here on a Sunday. He'd just moved back from BC looking for something to do. And I'd ride up and say, how do you do that? How do you do that? He said, well, sit down for eight hours, I'll show you. And we sat down for 150 hours and I made my first saddle eight years ago and the rest is history. Draw them out first on some dampened leather, then I'll cut them in with a swivel knife. This here is what a swivel knife looks like. And you cut in all the solid lines, then you background stamp down anything that doesn't look like a flower or a leaf or an acanthus or a stem. And uh, I do use a little bit of background dye and uh, saddle oil to darken the color of the leather because that will start off as this color here. Mm -hmm. uh, the oil preserves and enhances the project and it weatherproofs it. And come up to the bar you ranch, it's fun. Thank you. And your name is? Louis Peterson. And you're actually a Norwegian? Yeah, sure, big Ollie. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. My mom was uh, from Friesland. That means I'm half Norwegian, half Dutch. That means I make a mess, but I clean it up. So you said you're a Norwegian, yes? Half. He sent her over to Thief River Falls, Minnesota, where my great-grandfather was born. Do you know who, where, the, what the family is in Thief River Falls, just I could ask? No, Thorson is all we heard. Okay. And uh, then we were Petersons by the time, so I'm a son of Peter. Yeah, I'm a Peterson also. Oh, are you? Yep. Um, from Northern Norway. Okay. The harness repair shop, and if they can break it, I can fix it. But they're not breaking nearly enough harness, so I'm making things like stirrup holders uh, out of leather, and I'm doing different patterns. Okay. I get to build up my uh, saddle making expertise over the summer. Then in the winter time, I make saddles. Parks Canada is the greatest place in the world. They bring you teachers and trainers, and they'll help you do anything you need to know. Yeah. But I'm a blacksmith too. I'm a freeborn man everywhere I go. Talk to me, baby. Take it fast, take it slow. I ain't nothing but trouble. I'm a freeborn man, light up the stage, put on a big show. You're looking real good, what you waiting for? You're an arm full of heartache, no place else to go. I'm a freeborn man. Everywhere I go Talk to me, baby Take it fast, take it slow I ain't nothing but trouble I'm a freeborn man Take it slow I ain't nothing but trouble I'm a freeborn man And you're an arm full of heartache I'm a freeborn man